ABC 57 News starts right now. Covering South Bend, Elkhart, and all of Michiana, this is ABC 57 News at 5. Breaking overnight, a man dies after drowning in a Cass County lake. This morning, police are releasing more information on a drowning in Cass County. I'm ABC 57's Eric Stelz are coming up who police say drowned, and we'll show you exactly where that happened. Good morning, Michiana. Welcome to ABC 57 News. I'm Jesse McDonough. Now, you may want to grab a sweater before you head out this morning. We're off to a chilly start for a look at what you can expect for the rest of the day. Let's get right to ABC First Morning Neighborhood Meteorologist Tom Coombs for a look at today's forecast. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Jesse. Pretty chilly out there right now. Temperatures are dropping down into the 40s once again. We're staying clear across Michiana. Right now, 49 downtown South Bend. As we take a look, Look at ABC 57 first warning live Doppler radar. It is all clear over the downtown metro area as we go out for our wider view. Nothing showing up either for the rest of the area. Skies are clear. Temperatures are falling, but looks to be a nicer day today. Again, it was a little chilly for some, but temperatures will be on the rise as we go into the afternoon. In fact, they, in fact, they continue to climb as we go into the weekend. I'll show you that coming up in your ABC 57 first warning neighborhood weather forecast. Jesse. New this morning, we're uncovering more details in an overnight drowning. Now, the call came in for help around 9 Wednesday night at Indian Lake in Cass County. For the latest developments, let's get right to ABC 57's Eric Stelzer. He's live at Indian Lake with more. Eric, what have you learned about the victim this morning? Hey, Jesse. Well, I talked to police this morning. They said that victim is 58 year old Stephen Kranz. Now, we do have some video over where he drowned over at Indian Lake. This is probably about how dark it was at the time of that drowning. Police say the homeowners in the area were going to their boats when they noticed that body floating in the water. We also made up a map this morning of that area. Police say that the drowning happened at Silver Creek Township. It's going to be near Forest Beach Road. That's going to be about five miles west of Dwajak over in Cass County. Police also tell me they're not exactly sure how Kranz did end up in that uh, water, but investigators are going to be there later today to try to determine exactly what happened. Reporting live in Cass County, Eric Steltzer, ABC 57 News. Breaking overnight and in, in Indy, a 12 year old girl is critically injured after police say she was hit in the head with a sledgehammer. Now it happened just before nine last night on the city's east side. At last check, that girl was in critical condition. Police tell our sister station ABC six. The girl was awake and breathing when she first got to the hospital. And new this morning, one man is dead and another recovering after a trench collapse. Now it happened in Marion, Indiana, just after seven last night. Officers say one of the victims was buried up to his chest and the other up to his waist. Now emergency workers dug both men out and rushed them to the hospital. That's where 55 year old Ross Hoffman was pronounced dead. Now the other victim was treated and is recovering at home this morning. In Evansville, a 12 year old boy is in critical condition this morning. Police say he was hit while skateboarding. Now it happened Wednesday morning. Officers tell us a 41 year old driver. You can see that skateboard right here turning onto a road when he hit the 12 year old. Now medics rushed him to a local hospital. Then a crash reconstruction crew was called to the scene. Eastbound lanes were shut down for an hour. In Cass County, four people are facing charges for making meth. Tuesday officers searched two homes, one on Cassopolis Road and another on Calvin Center Road. In both houses, they discovered meth labs. Now this morning, 41-year-old John Pillow and 42-year-old Bonita King, 45-year-old Cassiel Rowe and 42-year-old Christina Way are all facing meth-related charges. Now let's head to the roads. You can expect more lane restrictions in Mishawaka today. It seems like that construction just never ends. Starting this morning, the westbound curb lane of University Drive will be closed. That's between Main Street and the entrance to Target Shopping Plaza. Now the restriction is expected to wrap up Monday, August 19th. 
NDOT is trying to revamp an intersection in Elkhart. Neighbors say it's a hot spot for car, crash it, car crashes. Now here is US 6 and here is County Road 29. Now NDOT plans to build a bridge right over US 6 to eliminate accidents. Officials say this intersection has a history of accidents, including several fatalities. Now the project is estimated to cost around $3 million. One big concern neighbors have is access. People driving on the bridge will no longer be able to get to US 6. NDOT says the annual crash report gave them the incentive to push for the intersection changes. It's had a history of serious accidents, um, including several fatalities. I've seen a lot of accidents here in the last 50 years. Now there will be a public hearing to discuss the proposed bridge on August 28th at Wawasee High School. Developing this morning in South Bend, a house on Sunnymead known as a hot spot for drugs have neighbors saying enough is enough. Now as ABC 57's Emily Evans shows us, they say they're more than ready for police to end the drug activity and take over their neighborhood. This is a copy of the notice that was posted on the door yesterday. While I was out here shooting this story, police actually showed up to the house. Something neighbors say has been happening regularly for two years now. They say it's because this house is a drug house. Now neighbors I spoke with didn't want to go on camera, but they say they are more than ready for police to put an end to the illegal activity that's been taking over their family friendly neighborhood. Drugs. They're the last thing you would think you'd find in this quiet, sunny mead neighborhood that many call a leave it to beaver kind of place. But residents say thanks to their neighbors who moved in a couple of years ago, drugs are now a problem. Police even put this notice on the door of the house. It warns of hazardous material on the property used to make drugs. So those I spoke with are confused as to why people are still living there. My concern obviously is that uh, uh, we have that kind of element, uh, a uh, crack house, if you will, uh, within our neighborhood. I tried knocking on the door to ask the residents if police were kicking them out, but got no response. A Silverman says if they house, do move out, uh, he can only hope that drug-free property owners will move in. Uh, hopefully the uh, uh, property owner, whoever that person might be, will be more responsible and both maintaining the house and, and who they lease the house out to. A few neighbors I spoke with say there's been a rise in home break-ins since these renters moved in across the street a couple of years ago. I reached out to South Bend Police to see if this was true, but have not yet heard back. In South Bend, Emily Evans, ABC 57 News. Now here's a warning for beachgoers in South Haven this morning. Health officials are keeping a close watch on the shoreline. Now South Beach still has high E. coli levels. We stopped by there and found the problem doesn't look like it's getting any better. Now the levels are actually six times higher than the allowed limit. Although there are signs posted urging you to stay out of the water, some people are still out there taking their chances. We came and seen some signs, but we still stayed and we're having a great time. ABC 57 did some research for you and found out contamination advisories there are fairly rare. Now the last time E. coli levels were this high was back in 2010. A team of scientists and EPA officials uncover another sinkhole in the sand dunes at Mount Baldy. Now that hole is just 100 yards from where six year old Nathan Wazner was buried under 11 feet of sand. This new hole is less than a foot in diameter and is only about five feet deep. When they were setting up one of their survey lines for the ground sensing equipment that the EPA is using out there, they actually found a hole that had opened up on the surface of Mount Baldy. Scientists say it could go down even farther because of the loose sand at the bottom. Mount Baldy remains closed this morning. And we're learning about a new app that can help keep you and your family safe from sex offenders. These are things we got to worry about now. Still to come, you can keep track of criminals wherever you go. And later, we're uncovering the dangers of sharing on social media sites. Another chilly start this morning. Temperatures are back in the 40s. Checking in in the Mentone area, 48 degrees right now. How warm do we get this afternoon? I'll tell you in your ABC 57 first morning neighborhood weather forecast.